Okay, so you're here because you want to install ENSP on Windows 11. Well, the good news is it is possible. So for those of you who are looking at this after having watched my Windows 10 video, the process is pretty much the same, um, just done on Windows 11. But I do want to warn you that there's a very great chance that Microsoft might change something on Windows 11 that can stop ENSP and any of its supporting software from running properly. And there may not be a workaround. If it ever does happen, I will try my best, but I'm not going to make any promises I can't keep right now. now I just say this so that for those of you who have watched my Windows 10 install video for ENSP, you don't need to watch this video completely if you don't want to. Um, a lot of it is going to be very similar. But nonetheless, though, for those of you who are watching this for the first time and have not seen the Windows 10 install video, let's talk about what ENSP is first. So ENSP is the Enterprise Network Simulation Program from Huawei, which is used to virtualize Huawei Enterprise Networking devices. Now, this can be very useful because it means you can study or learn or even test some of the devices before you deploy them um, or even before you purchase them which can save you some money because if you're going to try and study, learn and test things with real equipment, that costs real money. And it's either going to be your money or you're going to have to convince your boss to spend some. So what do you need to get going? Well, first of all, you need a computer running Windows 11, obviously. But beyond that, you would want to have at least a dual core CPU with some virtualization features. But most CPUs have that capability nowadays. Then you'd want about four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, if you have more, that'll be even better. And if you have less than four gigabytes of RAM, you'll be able to run ENSP, but you'll probably get maybe two or three network devices running at a time. And even then, they might run a little bit slowly. You also want to make sure that client Hyper-V is not installed. ENSP relies on Oracle's virtual box for virtualizing the appliances. And for some other reason, Hyper-V from Microsoft and VirtualBox from Oracle fight with each other, preventing each other from running smoothly. You also want to make sure that NPCAP is not installed. NPCAP is usually going to be brought along when you install a very modern version of Wireshark or if you're using a tool like NMAP. The thing is, Huawei's ENSP uses an old version of Wireshark as a supporting software which uses the older WinPCAP. So you must make sure NPCAP is not there because that will always take precedence over WinPCAP. It's the way it's programmed. You also need to make sure you download ENSP. You can get a safe version of that from me in the link in the description. And you'll also need Oracle VirtualBox 5.2.44 because that's the newest version of VirtualBox that will work with ENSP and still run on Windows 11, or at least at the time of recording this. Okay, so let's get going then. So the first thing you want to obviously do is extract the installers that we downloaded from the link in the description. It won't take you too long. Okay, once extracted, you will have uh, two folders in there, one labeled ENSP V100R002 and one labeled ENSP V100R003. I want you to click on the uh, folder that's ENSP V100R002. That's the version 1.2 installer, and I want you to launch that. Obviously, you have to say yes to the admin rights. Then you just click your way through the installation wizard agreeing to the license, uh, choosing installation directory, choosing start menu folder, choosing a desktop icon, and then you get to a screen where it tells you it's going to install WinPCAP, Wireshark, and VirtualBox version 5.1.24. These three applications are needed for ENSP to run. You, once you say OK, you click install, and the ENSP installation will happen. I'll fast forward the video for us, just so you don't have to watch this forever. And then will come the WinPCAP installer. Just click your way through the, the defaults. Then comes the Wireshark installer. Click your way through the default options. Don't worry about installing WinPCAP because we did that in the previous step. Then comes the VirtualBox 5124 installer. Just click your way through the defaults again. Uh, if it asks you about network adapters, just say install. 
It's a virtual network adapter, VirtualBox users. Now, one of the things I suggest doing is not launching VirtualBox just yet. You can do it later. And the same for ENSP. Untick the launch and uncheck the show update log. We'll do it later. Then I want you to go back a folder and go into ENSP v100r003 and run the ENSP setup application that's in there. This will update ENSP to version 1.3 and just click your way through the installation options again, choosing pretty much the same as before. And you'll notice that this time it tells you it detects the presence of WinPCAP, Wireshark and VirtualBox. Uh, this installer won't add them, so you have to have had them from the previous step. If they're not there, it won't let you install. All right, and again, we're going to just uh, fast forward a little bit because I don't want you guys to watch this forever. The watch time would be nice, but I value your time. Okay, again, I'm going to untick the launch and show update log. I'm not interested in seeing that right now. We'll, again, like I keep saying, we'll launch ENSP just now. Then I want you to try and open VirtualBox, and you'll see you get this error. Uh, the reason why is because Microsoft doesn't let you run that older version of VirtualBox on Windows. It's the same problem that it popped up with Windows 10 a couple of years back, um, 2020 if my memory serves me correctly. So what you want to do is you want to uh, download and unzip the VirtualBox version 5.244 installer, if you haven't already done so. And then what I want you to do is run the VirtualBox version 5.2.44 installer to upgrade VirtualBox to version 5.244. Version 5.2.44 is the newest version that will work with uh, ENSP and Windows does not block it. So that'll help a bit. Again, I'm gonna fast forward this because you're just choosing the same default options and going through the installation process as before. Now I'm unticking it because I'm in a habit of always launching my software myself, but you can launch from it if you want to. And now when you try and open it, you should actually get a window opening up. Now do me a favor, please don't update this because ENSP does not work with version six or version seven of VirtualBox. I have tried it, it doesn't work. Now you'll see a couple VMs there by default. Uh, leave those be, those are used by ENSP. Now we're gonna launch ENSP for the first time. It will always ask you for admin rights when you open it because it does some weird things to your computer. Don't worry, we're always not spying on you, I think. Now, the first time you open it, if you are using the Windows Firewall, you'll get two firewall prompts that pop up straight away. Just choose the options that you're happiest with and let, them th let the NSP through. NSP th uh, will want to be let through the firewall because it is able to bridge your virtual topologies to a physical network, or you can use it to connect virtual machines you run in VirtualBox to the uh, virtual topology so you can actually really have a lot of fun experimenting with this network and generating some real traffic. There will be a third firewall prompt that will trigger when we run the switch for the first time. Every time you open the NSP, even if you have let it through the firewall, it always gives you this warning to say please make sure it's let through the firewall. I think this is mainly there in case you're using a third party firewall where ENSP won't be able to trigger those prompts like we had just now. So just say okay and it goes away. It doesn't really do anything. Now we just want to check that everything's fine and also we want to trigger that third firewall prompt as well. So let's go click on the new topology button or new topo button and then click on the router icon, grab an AR2220 and click it into the workspace. Click on the switch icon and then click on an S5700 and click into the workspace. Click on the wireless devices or wireless LAN devices and then you go for an AC6005, click it in and an AP2250, sorry 2050. Then click and drag to highlight all the devices in orange and click the green play button and that should start up these devices. Uh, no matter how good your CPU is, this might take a while to happen. So just be patient. I'll fast forward because I don't want you to waste your time watching this if, you, if I can avoid that. Okay. Now, the switch will trigger a, or well, the first time you run a switch, it'll trigger the third firewall prompt. Again, just choose the option you're happiest with and that will allow the switches to run properly. Now, if you click on the open all CLI button, you will be able to open every uh, command line interface window for each of the devices in your topology. And then you can check the booting process. During the booting process, you will see hashes running across the screen. That is how you know it's busy booting. And then once you see the device's name in square bracket, uh, greater than less than brackets, or you see the model number. 
you now know the device is up and running. You can say display version at the terminal and press enter and then you can check to see on the second line of output for the device's model name. There's the S5700 for the switch. Let me close that and get it out of the way. Access point is next up, display the version. And you can see the AP2050 model name there. Uh, the routers normally come up after that. And then you can say display version and see the model name there. And I'm going to fast forward the access controller because it does take a while. There we go. And with the access controller, you actually get the model name there. And you can say display version. And you can see the name in the second line of output there. All right, thanks for watching. And I am planning to do a video on the basics in ENSP and how just to set yourself up with it. So uh, feel free to subscribe so you get notified and all that stuff when I do create that video and upload it. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and good luck. Hope to see you next time.